This right here, what we're doing, this is not a religious extracurricular. This right here, what we're doing, this is community. Everybody say community. 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 Tonight we're talking about our people. Like who, who are our people? And, and so just turn to the person next to you and say, you are my people. Just tell them that right now. You are my people. Some of you, you're sitting next to someone and you're like, no, no, not that person. Uh, I've, I know them and they are not my people. Okay, we'll work on that. We'll work on that. We're talking about community in this bigger conversation called the lighter life. Uh, you know, indulge me, uh, if you would, and say the lighter life. We want you to have a lighter life. The world is heavy. High school's heavy. Relationships are heavy. Family's heavy. Sickness is heavy. There's all these things that are heavy. And then all the things that the world says, well, if you just do this, it'll go well. If you just do that, it'll go well. All the things that the world says, well, how is it working for you? It's heavy, isn't it? But Jesus, he comes along and he says this, and we talked about this last week, and, and, and by the way, uh, you should grab one of these on your way, and it's just this little, little sheet that like, helps you just like, take some notes and helps you focus, and uh, also there's like an activity that we're going to do that's on the back there. Some of you are like, you already cheated, you like, looked ahead, you're like, oh, I, I see what we're going, I see what we're going to do here, okay, yep, that's just fine, you go ahead, you be that person. But here's something that Jesus said, our, our whole passage is actually verses uh, 28 through 29, but at the end, that's where this this whole idea of the lighter life comes from. It says that, for my yoke is easy to bear. And remember last week we talked about how a yoke is not like an egg. It's, it's like the belief that you adopt so that you can live the best life that you possibly could. And Jesus, he has a yoke, a teaching, a, a way of seeing the world. My yoke is easy to bear. And the burden I give you, it's light. Everybody say light. light. Time for a lighter life. Last week, we had like a bunch of people up here with these bricks and stuff, and we had this idea of, of, you know, the yoke that you choose, the yoke that you choose, it changes how your burdens feel. And if you missed that, you can get on our YouTube page and you can check that out. And some of you, um, you like, like dropped bricks on the, you know, and we, I don't think we damaged the stage. No one like sent me a bill or anything yet. So hopefully it's all, it's all good, man. It's all good. Don't worry about it. Uh, so anyway, uh, this was our idea last week, but here's the idea that I want us to focus on this week as we talk about community. Because your relationships, your relationships are a core part of whether or not you're going to have a lighter life. See, the, this is the idea. What our people are all about becomes what our story is all about. What our people are all about becomes what our story is all about. See, this idea, it explains a lot, right? Like, it's, it's why, like, you really don't have a reason for why you might be a Waukee Warrior fan or a Northwest fan or you might be a Valley fan or why you might be an Iowa fan or an Iowa State fan. You don't really have, like, the reason for it other than, like, you live there. You just, like, it's your people. And then somewhere along the way, it started to get better. You started to experience the good things of your people. And you begin to identify with it. And then when, when you go out and you see, I heard that it was a bit of a slaughter, uh, Joaquin Valley. Oh, sorry. Uh, I didn't make it to the varsity game. I didn't make it to the varsity game. I did, though, I did take my son to the JV game because, you know, he's six. He goes to bed at like 7.30, okay? Like we, we had to leave at halftime for the JV game. So we went to the JV game, and uh, it was his very first, like, in-person football game. So to him, there was no difference between watching the NFL and watching Waukee and Valley JV. I mean, like, it was, it was just insane. There were stands, there were people, and he was going nuts, okay? And now, if any of you have known me for five minutes, you know that football's not really my thing. Uh, I was bad at all sports growing up. I felt like I didn't belong until I was 13 and found a guitar in my dad's attic. And then that became my thing, okay? Like, that was like, ah, oh, this is, I, I'm, I'm, my people are music people. Okay, this is great. And so, uh, but for me, sports just never, never was my thing. I wanted it to be so bad. But my son, oh, he loves it. And of course, he's my people. 
And he's playing flag football now, baby. So who do you think is the rowdiest dad at the flag football games right now, okay? Like, that's me. Like, this guy that didn't like football at all growing up is just like, all right, son, you can do it. Here we go. And, and I'm, like, watching every move that he makes. Like, I am all about it because our people. And then when he wins, guess what I say? We won. I didn't do anything in that game. Do you ever say that? Like, our team, we won. When you just watched, <laughs> you know? But it's our people. It becomes our story. What our people are all about becomes what our story is all about. It explains why this school year has been very different than last for some of you. Because you started hanging out with the people that really all they're about is smoking pot, and now that's what you're about. Awkward. Uh, but true. See, the truth is, this year has been different, or the last year and a half has been different because you got into that relationship, and your whole story, your whole, like, you pretty much deserted all of your people so that you could be in that relationship, and everyone's worried about you. Everyone thinks that it's not going well. Everyone thinks that it's unhealthy, but you guys love each other, and so he or she became all, what you were all about, and now that's all your story's about. What's your story about? Look at your people, and I, 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 bet it, I bet you could pretty easily put it together. What's your future going to be like? Look at your people, and I, I bet you could put it together. You probably heard this before. You're the sum of your five closest friends. If you look at your friends, you can see a picture of what your future is going to be. And some of you are like, oh, no, my friends, they, are, they need some help. Did you know, one time we did a poll in Ignition, this was maybe a year or two ago, we did a poll and we said, how many of you actually pick your friends as opposed to they just happen to be around you? Like they were on your team, or they, they, they were just, you know, assigned to you in some, you know, formal setting, some extracurricular activity, some class, some something. Do you know that over 90% said that they didn't choose their friends? a lot. Is that the kind of community that we're made for? Could it be that the reason why life doesn't feel as light as God made it to be is that there's something off in our community? Because our people and what they're all about, it becomes what our story is all about. Are your people all about God? Are your people all about living a lighter life? Because the truth is, if you want a lighter life, you probably need to hang out with people that also want a lighter life. And if you want a good relationship with God, you probably got to hang out with some people that are trying to have a good relationship with God. And the good news is, you are. Look at you. Everyone just do one of these. Yeah. yeah good. Way to go, me. Way to go, me. I, I showed up. Yeah, you, you did. You are. But now let's, let's ask a serious question. As you're here, are you just, is this just an extension of, of study hall? Or are you here to experience something together that you couldn't get anywhere else? I hope that you don't miss the good things that God has for you. And it's easy, I get it, like some of you, you walk in, you're like, the boy I love is here. Or the girl I love is here. And this is all you can think about. It's all, some of you, not, not the girl that I love. The girl that I love is at home with my children, just to be clear, okay? Yeah, that, that was weird. I just like, yeah, Michelle is her name. She's the best. Uh, and so just want to like publicly say that in case you were like, is he talking about teenagers and him? No, I'm not. That's weird. Can we move on, please? This got weird fast. No, Nick, no one was thinking that. Oh, no one was thinking it? Good. No. It was supposed to be you, okay? I was like saying your voice. You get it. You get it. If you get it, say got it. Woo, all right. Oh, man, I am. I'm, is it hot up here or is it just me? I want to ask about, are you engaging in this community because you're around other people that they want to find out what relationship with God could be like? And if you are, good news, you will. And if you aren't, not so good news. 
You probably won't. And you'll probably just hang out here until it's inconvenient enough. And then you won't. And then we'll miss you. See, this is a community. This isn't an extracurricular activity. So uh, last week we did this survey, and it was just a faith check-in, uh, and it's totally anonymous. So uh, I'm going to share um, about Kayla's faith. Okay, let's put Kayla's faith. No, just kidding. Uh, we're, we're not going to do that. We're just talking about this whole group, the whole group. Sorry, Kayla. I, I just saw you there. I just had to pick on you. So let, let's put up some of the stats, some of the stats. Th this is what Ignition is feeling. 80% of you have these burdens. You're stressed out because of school. And if you're stressed out right now because of school, like, you're normal. And you're not alone. You're around some people that feel that too. 64% of you, you're concerned about your future. 50% of you have friendship problems. Good thing we're talking about community tonight. 48% are saying, I've been struggling with mental health. That's a, a present burden in my life. And uh, over a third of you are saying, things are rough in my family right now. How about this? 62% uh, of you are saying, hey, I'm, I've been feeling too busy for God. Like, I just, I just haven't made time for him. A third of you struggle with doubts, which, by the way, just to be super clear about doubts, you're in the right place to struggle with doubts. You're supposed to struggle with doubts. What you're not supposed to do is just say, oh, I have doubts. I'm bad. God doesn't want to shame you for having doubts. He wants to talk to you about your doubts. So let's explore them. You're in the right place. Here's where it starts to get a little sad, though. 30% of you, you've been hurt, whether it's by a Christian that was just kind of hypocritical or maybe there was some painful and unfair thing that happened to you in life. And so faith now is hard. Church is hard. 20% of you said that you feel uncomfortable being yourself around Christians. Don't blame you. Christians don't exactly have a reputation for acceptance. They have a reputation for judgment. Even though that we were made and designed and created as a community to be the most accepting, loving community on the face of the earth. Here's one. This is what I found most fascinating. 43% of you said, I don't feel close to God right now. You didn't put RN. I ran out of room. I'm hip with the teens, you know. RN, I know what that means. Ha, ha. Guess what? 40% of you, or 44%, said that you're uncomfortable opening up to others at church. Wait, 43 feel like they're not close to God. 44 feel uncomfortable opening up to others at church. Guys, I saw the graph. It looked exactly the same. And those of you that filled it out, you know, if you're not comfortable opening up to people at church, you're probably not going to have a great relationship with God. Because faith, faith just goes better. Faith, this is the big idea for tonight. Faith, it just goes better when we're spending time together, when it's done together. Faith is meant to be done as a community. And if you're showing up to be social but not to engage with Jesus together, you're going to miss it. And I don't want you to miss it. I want you to, to feel and experience everything that God has for you. Faith goes better when it's done together. And so our, our, our passage, and I, I know I skipped it. I want to make sure you can fill in the blanks. Some of you are, like, obsessed with, you've got to fill in these blanks. This is right out of our, our Bible reading from tonight. It's from Acts chapter 2. And this is the very first community when the church was born, when the Holy Spirit showed up and, and moved in a miraculous way. People heard God's word and they were cut to the heart. Is your heart open to God's word? Or are you just sitting in the back doing your own thing with your earbuds in? I can see the white earbuds, by the way. Like, I can see them. Like, it's not like I'm blind. The lights are on. See, here's the thing. There is something incredible happening right here. I don't want you to miss what this community is about. See, Scripture says that all, everyone say all. Is that some of us? No, it's all of us. Does that include you? Yeah, that, so this applies to you. All the believers, like if you believe, it applies to you. All the believers, what do they do? 
Say it like you mean it. Devoted, devoted baby. They devoted themselves. They, they, were, they were all in. They were all about it because what your people are all about becomes what your story is all about. Oh, this became what their story was all about. Jesus became what their story was all about. And so they, they didn't devote themselves to Jesus so that Jesus would like them or they could fit into this cool little like church crowd because everyone else had rejected them. You don't have to fit in at Ignition. At school, you have to try to fit in. In the lunchroom, you have to try to fit in. At Ignition, if you sense that, oh no, I'm trying to fit in, you're doing it wrong because you belong right now. Right now. And if someone's making you feel like you don't, they're doing it wrong. Because this community is centered on Jesus. All the believers, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Then That's what you're doing right now. I'm not an apostle, but I'm speaking from the scriptures. The teaching about Jesus. Last week we talked about his yoke. The way that we follow him. To fellowship. This is like an old-timey word. Everyone say, fellowship. fellowship. Look at the person next to you and say, Hey, fellow. Yeah, like you guys are fellows and you are hanging out. Why do you think we do breakout sessions? It doesn't look very spiritual, does it? Well, it's because of this. We need space to just be together. No agenda. Nothing other than to be in relationship because you were made for a relationship. And to be in a relationship where you don't have to like be in the jungle, you know, where it's like survival of the fittest. It's not survival of the fittest here. Jesus is the only one that is fit. Jesus is the only one. And he says, you belong. So they devoted themselves to teaching and the fellowship and the sharing and meals. They could have put, but didn't, uh, chocolate-covered pretzels, which I know like five billion of you ate lots of chocolate-covered pretzels. So many chocolate-covered pretzels, okay. Including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. So why do you think we pray? Why do you think we have small groups? Why, why do you think we do all this? Because, well, the church, the church, not the church that you see on the news, okay? The church you see on the news is the people that aren't doing this right. But we are an imperfect community. And if you think you've got to be perfect to be in it, you should get to know Jesus a little more. Because Jesus is the only perfect one. Anyone else that thinks that they're perfect? Or anyone else that thinks that they're good enough? Or anyone else that thinks that they're higher than someone else? They're just wrong. And they need to take a closer look at who Jesus is and how much they love him. How much he loves them. Because faith goes better when it's done together. Faith goes better. When it's done together, God is inviting you into this family. So when you go to small groups, remember, there's like 40% of you don't feel comfortable opening up. So welcome them. Be kind to them. Like if you feel comfortable, like get to know them and make them feel comfortable. If you're walking through the halls and you see someone that they're not like with anybody and you just like walk past them, don't do that. Say, hey, how you doing? Like, make them feel at home because they belong here. If you have someone that you have beef with and you've been posting things and they've been posting things and, and like, there's all the drama that's stirring up and, and all this stuff, okay? Like, I get it. It's high school, but not here. You're called to more. You're called to a lighter life. And if you want a lighter life, you've got to be around people that are seeking a lighter life. If you want a lighter life, you need the light of the world who is Jesus Christ, who created your life, who gave you this community. And this community will only be as good, as faithful as you are together. Because faith goes better when it's done together. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take like five minutes before we head to groups. Five minutes. I want you to flip over that piece of paper. 
And there's, there's a bunch of you in here that, like, as I'm talking about community, there's a bunch of feelings that are coming up. And, and so what I want you to do is just, we're going to put a little music on, and I just want you to take some time. Don't talk to your neighbor. Don't get on your phone. If you get on your phone, I'm going to come over and I'm going to smack it. Like, this is the room. This is the no phones room unless we tell you to take it out, okay? Other places you can have phones. And then in your groups, maybe you'll decide, let's do no phones in here too. Like, you as a group can decide that. But let's, let's put those, those things, those feelings that might be coming up for people. Maybe you're here and you feel angry with someone. Maybe you're alone, like you feel alone. Maybe you're in a crowded space, but you feel so alone, but you're also afraid to open up. Maybe you're just tired of all the drama. Maybe you're torn about the friends that you have because they don't really fit with your faith or they, they kind of like bring your faith down and they don't encourage it. Maybe you're here and there's just, there's just something else, and that's okay. But what I want you to do, we're going to take like five minutes, and I want you to ask, God, which one of these am I these days? And if it's something else, you can write it down. Just listen sort of like in your mind, in your heart, in your feelings, and just honestly in faith ask him, God, what's going on with me? And then what you're going to do is you're going to read our series verse in the scripture reading from tonight. And I want you just to like jot down or circle or highlight the things that stand out to you about what you're experiencing as you're reading those verses. See what God might be calling you to do. Then we'll take just a second and you can write down a little prayer. But just take this time to let God speak directly to you. Directly to you. If you didn't get one of those, those pieces of paper, now's a great time to go get that. But I'm, I'm asking for your respect for everybody around here, for you to be totally silent, totally silent, not on your phone, not poking each other, not trying to have a conversation, just being right here in this moment. So let's, let's put, we'll put a timer on, some, something like that, like five minutes we'll give you for this and we'll come back and we'll wrap things up and send you off to group.
And each day, the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. What if the love that we share in this community, the peace that we share in this community, the lighter life that we share in this community, the Lord Jesus Christ that we share in this community, the grace that we find, the forgiveness of sins, what if, what if the relationships that you had in this place far outweighed, well, we practiced together and we won a game, we practiced together and we did a play, we practiced together, and all of those things are great, all those things are fantastic. In fact, so many, th- so many people, they bring their faith into those places in such an, an incredible way because they have this. Because they know that faith, it, it goes better when it's done together. So what I want you to do is I want you to stand and, and receive this blessing. I'm going to send you out with a blessing to your groups. So go ahead and stand your feet. Stand your feet right now. And may the God who made you for community bless you, strengthen you, and fill you with courage to open up, to be the real you. May he fill you with love for one another. May he fill you with a lighter life. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen.